This is Twit. <laughs> in in this week's uh, crazy headline news, uh, for example, Fox News headline was uh, Facebook engineers panic, pull the plug on AI after bots develop their own language. Okay, that was the most over-the-top one. The Facebook engineers did not panic. Uh, but even uh, BGR, Boy Genius Report, said Facebook AIs develop own language and are immediately shut down. <sighs> okay, well, that wasn't true. <laughs> it's not true either. But, you know, at least it doesn't – It doesn't. I mean, it, it sort of implies panic where the, none existed. Many news outlets covered the story. Uh, and and also picked up on each other's coverage, seemingly amping it, you know, like one upping each other as they they linked in a chain. I tracked down the original coverage, uh, which was much drier and and far more accurate over on fastcodesign.com. Um, and the the sober headline was AI is inventing languages can't understand. Should we stop it? And it was a a long and thought-provoking piece. I'm just going to summarize it a bit here. So what they wrote is researchers at Facebook realized their bots were chatting in a new language. Then they stopped it. But they didn't stop it because they were afraid of it. They stopped it because they considered it a programming error that they had not con- they had not explicitly constrained the dialogue to be English. So, for example, uh, they it, it, there was a there's a I'll, I'll get into this in a little bit of, in detail in a second, but there was a a deliberate negotiation protocol where two independent AI agents talk to each other, and they were named appropriately, Alice and Bob. And so, for example, Bob said, I can, can, I, I, everything else, which is not perfect English. Alice responded, balls have zero to me, 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 to, which, again, not English. But what's what's interesting is that they understood each other. Um, like that twins. Passage, exactly. Ex- perfect example, Leo. Yeah. Now, that passage looks like nonsense, but this nonsense, in quotes, was the discussion of what might be the most sophisticated negotiation software on the planet. Negotiation software that had learned and evolved to get the best deal possible with more speed and efficiency and perhaps hidden nuance than we are able to perceive. The conversation occurred, as I said, between two AI agents developed inside Facebook. At first, they were speaking to each other in plain old English, but then researchers realized they'd made a mistake in programming. Um, Dhruv Batra, at Facebook AI Research, that's an acronym, Facebook AI Research, FAIR, F-A-I-R, um, is a visiting research scientist from Georgia Tech. He said, there was no reward for sticking with the English language as the AIs conversed. The two AI agents were competing to get the best deal, which is an effective strategy for sharpening the operation of AI by pitting them against each other in what is known as a, quote, generative adversarial network, unquote. In this case, neither was offered any incentive for speaking as a normal person would. So as they grew, they began to diverge from English. Eventually, rearranging legible words into seemingly nonsensical sentences, but sentences they each understood. 
Batra speaking to a now predictable phenomenon that's been observed over and over and over said AI agents will drift away from understandable language inventing more efficient code words for themselves. So we then wonder, should we let our software do the same thing? Should we allow AI to evolve its dialects for specific tasks that involve speaking to other AIs to essentially gossip out of our earshot? Maybe. It offers us the possibility of, a, uh, and this is coming from the, the text at Fast Code Design, uh, inter- a more interoperable world, a more perfect place where iPhones talk to refrigerators that talk to your car without a second thought. The trade-off is that we, as humanity, would have no clue what those machines were actually saying to one another. Mike Lewis who is a researcher, a research scientist at FAIR, said that Facebook ultimately opted to require its negotiation bots to speak in plain old English. He wrote, our interest was having bots who could talk to people. And Facebook isn't alone in that perspective. Microsoft has also indicated that it's more focused on human to computer speech. Meanwhile, Google, Amazon, and Apple are also focusing incredible energies on developing conversational personalities for human consumption. They're the next wave of UI, like the mouse and keyboard for the AI era. So another issue, as Facebook admits, is that it has no way of truly understanding any divergent computer language. Batra says, it's important to remember, there aren't bilingual speakers of AI and human language. We already don't generally understand how complex AIs think because we can't see inside their thought processes. Adding AI to AI conversations to this scenario would only make that problem worse. So it's interesting. What we're finding is that when we create sufficiently powerful AI, that inherently means that they have wide latitude and huge degrees of freedom. And when they're allowed to talk to each other, uh, I mean, if, what's really freaky is this was, remember Colossus, the Forbin Project? Loved that movie. That wonderful, it's like what, like in from the 60s or 70s? Yeah. I mean, it was an yeah. old movie. Um can't remember who the star was. You're on the same uh, page. Somebody in the chat room says, new version of the Forbin Project. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, where, where Colossus uh, determined that there was an, uh, it had a counterpart in Russia, and it insisted that an, a, a communication link be established, and they began talking and quickly evolved their own language which the scientists at East End were completely unable to understand. And, you know, they started with, with a mathematic basis and then evolved just completely out of, of anyone's ability to interpret it. And what's bizarre is it turns out that's exactly what happens. If we don't constrain two AIs that are, that are flexible enough to, to have that capability, they will diverge from, from and come up with a better language. They're talking to one another right now. Colossus, the Forbin Project. <laughs> it was nobody famous in this. I don't think it's anybody whose name you would recognize today. But that was a great it's movie. It's making you a prisoner. Uh oh. Shock, horror, suspense. <laughs> created with all the technological brilliance of 2001, a space odyssey. Not really. <laughs> Colossus is the ultimate in sophisticated computers. I'm going to try to convince the computer that you're my mistress. And that therefore, I have to be given the opportunity to see you regularly in private. That way we can... That's one of the Bond actors. Oh, is it? A bad Bond? Yeah. Bad, or, no, really? Four times a week. So he's a prisoner of Colossus, right? Colossus apparently can speak, but when it types talks to humans, it has to type. 
When do you think you'll be able to attempt the overload? Colossus. <laughs> Sees all, senses all, knows all, controls all armaments and all defenses. When this emotionless creation becomes the master of man, the result is catastrophic. Well, now I'm going to, I know what I'm watching tonight. <laughs> it's a great movie, Leo. I, 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 I'm going to have to watch it again, too. I mean, it is old, but it was, it was really well done. And in fact, uh, Earlier in this podcast, years ago, we I mentioned that I had heard there was going to be a remake, oh, and I don't know what happened remake. to it, but I but I hope it happens because it, it came would out be in the nineteen seventies. So okay, Eric yep. Braden is the guy's name, but oh, I, I thought he was okay. Yeah, uh, no, not not famous, not but famous. Anyway, great movie, <laughs> great 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 movie. Yeah.